Welcome back to the Story of Liberty. This is John Bona. Thank you for joining us again in this series of the political sermons of the American founding era. Great preacher Richard Price gave a discourse on the love for our country on November 4th, 1789. And this sermon shook the nations. There was much ridicule from those in power in Britain, as you could imagine. They had a different view of liberty. They thought they and they alone were entitled to liberty. The lords, the viscounts, and the earls. But the regular people, they just had to go about their own way without liberty. Richard, of course, went to Psalm 122 as his sermon. In this beautiful psalm, we see how David expresses in a very strong and beautiful language his love for Israel and the reasons upon which it was founded. The first thing that Richard addressed in his sermon was not that the country meant the soil or the spot on the earth where it happened to be located or where somebody was born. It wasn't the beautiful forests or the fields or the green grass, but it was the community of which we are members, the body of companions and friends and kindred who are associated with us that constitute the government. In other words, we, the people, the consent of the governed, protected by the same laws and bound together by that same civil politic. Secondly, it was the duty to observe, even in our sense of love for our country, which is our duty to love our country. It doesn't simply imply that we neglect other countries, but we have a special love for our own. And the truth is, America has sent missionaries around the world over and over again. And third, he addressed the issue of our independence, our liberty. We know in America, the only thing that we have asked for when we went to defend the liberties of other nations, as Colin Powell said very well one day, was a place to bury our dead. Our men, our boys died fighting for freedom and liberty in other countries. Think of it, what contrast, what was the love for their country among the Romans? We have heard much of it. And as Richard said, he couldn't hesitate and say that their goals were so different. They were like a band of robbers in their attempt to crush all liberty but their own. But Christianity did so much better, and that's the difference. Our Lord and his apostles did so much better. They stressed on loving all men, all nations, even our enemies. That is virtue, is it not? Richard mentioned the Savior's parable of the Good Samaritan. Is that not proof of this concept? As we know, the Jews and the Samaritan were rivals. So deep in this parable we see, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Pastor Richard Price, he stressed three main chief blessings in his sermon about human nature. And he said that they follow three main principles, truth, virtue, and liberty. And that distinguished a country from a country of atheists, a country of humanists. What he said is that the love of our country was so obvious because of the Christian religion. It was the Christian religion that brought liberty. It was from nowhere else because liberty is God's idea. Why are nations of the world so patient under tyranny? 
Why do they crouch to the tyrants? Why do they genuflect to the tyrants? And to be treated as if they were a herd of cattle? Is it not because they are kept in darkness? They look for knowledge, but they are not enlightened. But if you enlighten them with the scriptures, you will elevate them. Show them that they are men and they will act like men. Give them the just ideas of civil government. And they will have the knowledge to defend their rights. It'll be impossible for them to submit to a government like most of those in the world today that are led by tyrants that usurp the rights of men. Convince them that there is a God who is a righteous God and benevolent as well as being omnipotent. And regards one of our main phrases of our founding documents that all men are created equal in his eye. It is the Christian religion, the only rational religion. Yes, that is worshiping God with a pure heart. And from there we see the development of civil government. Civil government not being perverted. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case in America as we see corruption at the highest levels. In short, Richard said it was truth, and truth only came from the Holy Writ. And it was our duty to resist the oppressors of the world. See, they know the light is hostile to them, and so they labor to keep men in dark. They have actually prohibited the reading of the Bible. And folks, we have done that now in our public schools. What a sad comment. But if you remove the darkness in which they envelope the world by removing the Holy Writ, their power will be subverted and the world will be emancipated. So we see the three, truth, virtue, and liberty are tied together. Let's talk about virtue a minute. What do we know? That virtue must follow knowledge. Virtue without knowledge is very bad. The next great blessing of human nature is virtue. So we must discourage vice in all its forms and endeavor to enlighten and this is where the pulpits of America have to be flame with righteousness again. The pulpits of America must teach their congregations what the Bible says about civil government. Richard Price preached upon that over and over. Because if the pulpits don't preach it, the people, for the most part, will not hear the truth of what the Bible says what civil government should be. Liberty is the next great blessing that Richard Price talked about. It is inseparable from knowledge and truth and virtue, he said, and together with them completes the glory of a community. It'll reduce the tyrants to a heap of ants. Look around the world, and you'll find almost in every country, either they are respectable or contemptible. They are either happy or miserable. They are either fruitful or they're waste. According to what? According to the liberty that it possesses. Think of North Korea and South Korea. In North Korea, there is no liberty for the common folk because they're ruled by a dictator, a tyrant. South Korea has become Christian and the economy is flourishing. Folks, if we love our country, we need to be zealous in promoting the cause of liberty, in promoting the Christian faith where it comes from. 
Obviously, liberty in a nation produces good civil government, good institutions that guard our families, our persons, our business, our property against invasion from within and without. It makes good laws that do not pervert God's higher law. And that's why the law of abortion in America needs to be overturned because it perverts God's higher law. How can he continue to bless this nation when we pervert his laws with gay marriage and abortion? It's okay to give our Congress people and people in the Senate, uh, treat them with respect, but we don't need to uh, flatter them with language. A good civil government and its leaders will only go to war if there's a just war theory, a defensive war, and apply the just war theory. And let us not forget that all of us should pray for America, for peace and posterity in America, as we're commanded to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. And let us offer thanksgiving to God, the author of all of our blessings. As David said, and it is written in scripture, had he not been on our side, we should have been swallowed up quick, and the proud waters would have gone over our souls. But our souls are escaped, and the snare has been broken. Blessed be the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Well, Richard Price shook the world, and we remember this great sermon on the following three principles that he offered in addition. The right to liberty of conscience in the religious matters. Secondly, the right to resist power when abused. And third, the right to choose our own governors, our own senators, and our own president. And yes, punish them for misconduct and frame a government for ourselves. Of these three principles, and especially the last, was the revolution founded, he said. Were it not for that liberty of conscience is a sacred right, and that power abused justifies resistance, and that civil authority is a delegation from the people. He said, forget passive obedience and non-resistance and the divine right of the kings. These wretched doctrines that imply that God made mankind to be oppressed and plundered, which are no less a blasphemy against him and an insult on common sense. Well, over 200 years ago, we understand why the revolution took place. Because men did have a right to liberty of conscience in religious matters. Now we see our children cannot even read a Bible in public schools. This is so wrong. Richard Price knew it back then. He knew that if Christians were not in government, this would happen. See, we really have inequality of our representation. Most people in America say they're Christian. But how many Christians, real Christians, born again Christians do we have in Congress and in Senate? That's why our government is corrupt. We don't have enough Christians in government. So what do we do? Well, we practice these three principles of truth, virtue, and liberty, and vote on the side of liberty, not a tyrant who's going to force us to buy things like health insurance that we don't need or don't want. So folks, do we look for God for the 
continuance of his favor to our country? Of course we do. On any of us with common sense and faith, of course. Do we pray for its prosperity? Do we detest, as Richard Price mentioned back in 1789, the monstrous weight of debt that's crippling our nation? This vice upon our nation, $17 trillion of debt, every day becoming more unreconcilable and will encroach our security and our liberty. We need to pray for America to save it from the dangers that now threaten it from within. Well, as Richard Price said, I'm very thankful to be living in these days and I pray and hope that America will return to its foundational constitutional roots. We need to remember that under God, the highest authority in this land is we the people. And we the people who have agreed to uphold our Constitution. We need to tell the world, as Richard Price did, that the oppressors of the world should tremble. They should take warning that they cannot hold the world in darkness any longer. They cannot withhold the light. It is only the Christian faith that produces liberty. So we need to go to the Bible to find out what God says, how we should run our world, our government. It's all in there. God bless you, and thank you for joining us in this series of the political sermons of the founding era.